I'm at the point where the rear of the car has to be sprung, meaning it needs shocks and coil springs. But where to put them? Since the width of the wider tires is all to the inside, I don't think there would be enough room between the tire and the frame rail. And lo and behold, there is not enough room unless major surgery is done on the frame rail. I need another plan. I mean, I could carefully and surgically remove part of the frame with, say, a blowtorch, but there wouldn't be much frame left on the frame. What to do, what to do. How about a cantilever? What could go wrong? Maybe Amazon sells a bolt-on kit. So I guess it would sit in here something like this and twirl around something like that. Shock on one end, push rod on the other. That might work. But first I'm gonna have to break out my trusty tape measure and do some careful calculations. On the first mock-up, I twisted a piece of flat bar to act as the hinge and used the cardboard rocker to get a better visual layout. It seems to go down just fine, but it's going to need a little adjustment. The next mock-up was made out of metal plate. It gives more of a 3D version of the rocker. I wanted to make sure it was all going to work out before I spent a bunch of time on the real thing. Once again, it travels down just fine, but the angles are all wrong as the push rod and rocker pivots should be 90 degrees at right height. I was going to show you how the lower push rod captures were made, but what's the point? It's going to take too much time. Well, okay, maybe just a quick run through. After the piece was welded in, I decided it needed a beauty hole. And boy, is it beautiful. All it needs is some paint. One side is done. We'll circle back to the cantilever later as I'm waiting for the aluminum rockers to be carved out. But for now, let's shift gears and talk about the turbo mount. I know, looks and sounds simple, right? Well, trying to hold and balance a 35 pound turbo while constructing a mount ain't that easy. The best thing to do, in my opinion, is first build a temporary fixture mount. Yep, another fixture. took six clamps to hold it in place.
The JD squared air over hydraulic bender doesn't even break a sweat bending the 1 inch by 120 wall chromoly tubing. The bent tube is the backbone of the turbo mount. The Maven mid-frame turbo mount is made out of some brand of stainless, maybe 304? I don't know what it is, but I'm going to weld it to the chromoly tube using stainless filler rod. Maybe I better put another pass on it. Making use of my CNC plasma cutter again. Let's see how fast I can get this temporary mount off of here. The fixture served its purpose and is headed for recycling. The turbo still has a little flex, but that was fixed with a gusset. Okay, well that about wraps up this video. Wait, before you go, I'd like to make sure you got your money's worth and show you one more thing. As you might have guessed, the Corvair gets a turbo. A turbo works better with an intercooler. Now, I could have used my credit card and just bought an intercooler, but then I'd have to show you what I bought, which, let's face it, isn't that impressive. Plus, if I built it myself, I'd save about a grand. Disclaimer. I didn't design the intercooler I built, just copied the one I would have bought, which is made by Precision Turbo. The heart of the intercooler is its core. This is where heat is removed from the intake charge and is why it's called a heat exchanger. In this example, I will be using a core made by Bell Intercoolers. Since the engine is mid-mounted, I will be using an air-to-water intercooler as it's the most practical. It's easier to pipe water to the intercooler than air. The dimensions of the core are 4.9 by 4.5 by 12 inches. I think the core cost around $300. The other parts are billet 3 inch inlet and outlet tubes from Monkey Fab and a couple of 1 inch MPT aluminum bungs. It was nice of Precision Turbo to supply a drawing with dimensions for their intercooler on their website. I could have winged it, but I figured their engineers have it all worked out and I'm not going to second guess them. So I'm just going to use a protractor to get some angles. A good place to start is the two side panels. After drawing the side view of a panel, a measurement was taken of the total piece in length. Then a template was made of the side panel laid out flat. The pattern was transferred over to aluminum and cut. The aluminum sheet I used was 125 thousandths thick and the material grade was 5052. I use it because it's shiny and pretty. Up next is drilling the 3 inch holes for the air inlet and outlet. Bending the side plate angles taken from the specifications taken from the drawing. Once the side panels are tacked in place, the top and bottom plates are traced out to the opening, cut and tack welded in place. Then it's just a matter of welding it up. Only about 5% of my welding is done on aluminum and I'm certainly no pro at it. I have to admit the precision intercooler has nicer looking welds. But every time I weld aluminum I learn something. Like for instance, 
I think the AC balance wasn't set right. It was set at 75% and I think it should have been closer to 80 as there seems to be excessive cleaning action. Concerning TIG welding, a wise man once told me to know my ABCs. Always be comfortable. That's why I use an adjustable articulating hand rest. It's difficult to have consistent welds with your arm drifting out in space. I wanted to make each in tank out of one piece of metal. This required drawing a model using dimensions used from the precision turbo drawing. The pie sections were cut out and the piece was folded and taped together. To keep the sides from crashing into each other when it's bent, an extra sixteenth was removed from each slit. As you can see, this piece can't be bent to break, so I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. Looks like I lucked out. I think I'll weld the edges first. To not have the visual of a blobby weld on the outside, the bung will be welded on the inside. And 10 hours later, the intercooler is done.